but are also formed. So we have talked about all this process from a zygote or two million number of chromosome containing cell, rapid cell division, morula, from that blastula, arrangement of cells creating a hollow sphere of cells, blastula, then it convert itself into the gastrula, gastrula phase. Gastrulation is a process which produces or uh, introduces us to ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm, then finally differentiate cells into produce different organs. So the determination, remember we already talked about determination in the very first uh, section of the video. Determination means while the cells are destined to produce a specific organ or, or to produce into a specific mature structure, once it is destined there, that is the determination and determination is required for the differentiation. Determination is required for the differentiation of cells. Once the differentiation of cells are very very important, once the differentiation of cell is done properly, then they are matured and they turn into the gastrulation phase. They turn through the gastrulation phase and then only the morphogenesis take place. Morphogenesis means once the cell distant to produce a specific type of mature organ or structure then there will be some changes over time some chemical changes as well as the genetic interactions will go on new gene products will produce genetic expression will vary and it will produce that particular organ that they destined to produce that's about the morphogenesis so see morphogenesis is extensively studied in drosophila so see morphogenesis contains pattern formation while the organization of differentiated tissues, so that's why I talked about morphogenesis occurs after the gastrulation phase, while all the tissues are already differentiated and then they'll produce the specific structures for the body segmentation in fruit flies, right? The gradients of uh, materials established in the egg and the actions of series of embryonic genes uh, that place there to finally turn themselves into the specific structure. For example, in the fruit fly, there are different segmentation of the body. You will see in case of insects, multiple segments of body are there like head, thorax and the abdomen. So the, these are the three major segments. Even in each of those segments, like in the thorax, there, is, there are mediothorax, ultra bithorax, bithorax. So different thorax regions are there, mid thorax or, or the uh, top thorax and the bottom thorax, different regions. And in abdomen itself, if you just uh, study the abdomen of an insect, you will see, or in case of a butterfly, you will see a structure like this. That abdomen is further divided into different fragments. So how come they produce lot of di different fragments? And not only they produce that organ, but also that organ has a specific way of handling and dealing with the situation because uh, the abdomen will never, the abdomen will never have uh, any of the legs. Legs always come from the thoracic region, not from the abdomen region. So these things are required and how could they arrange this thing? This arrangement completely depends on the gene expression, gene expression process. The gene expression, there are multiple genes that are working together, they are interacting, the gene products are interacting together to finally produce and, and produce a segmented condition, the segmentized options for the uh, <coughs> insect body. So say at the very beginning and also as the insect larva is a centralized yolk content, it also needs to determine which part will be the axis, I mean anterior, which part will be posterior, which part will be ventral and which part will be dorsal. That's very very important, right. So see in this case, if this is the organization, that body axis determination also is an important task in case of this uh, fruit flies. So we have a different video about fruit flies completely dedicated to them where I've talked about all this process like body axis determination as well as the differentiation as well as the body segment patterning. But in this video I'll majorly talk about how the segmentation works in a basic level. So there are genes called the maternal rule genes or the maternal effect genes. Then maternal effect genes, and there are some genes called gap. This is an example of such gene. This gap gene influence some other types of genes which will add some basic crude concentration gradient of proteins. For example, here you see the concentration gradient of this red color 
here you see the concentration gradient of this blue color proteins and at the middle none of the proteins are present designating it at the middle center and the red present more in the anterior blue present more in the posterior so this type of patterning or the gradient start to form by the gap genes then <clears throat> then a gene came pair rule genes pair rule genes then slowly segmentize the body into two into different regions and then the segment polarity genes comes in so if we begin with that maternal effect genes establishes the gradient in cell then gap genes define the broad areas uh, that will be regulated <coughs> by other genes called pair rule genes so see this is a function of maternal effect genes uh, like the uh, example is uh, bicoid bicoid is a gene product which is uh, present in the anterior designating anterior nanos is another gene oscar is another gene that is determining the posterior now the gap gene comes in it segmentized a portion it it it, uh, dis it defines area or the region uh, which will produce the different segments of the body once that is designated then other type of genes come in which are called pair rule genes now the pair rule genes here they refine the segment locations small segment location which part is going to produce what this all segmented locations of the body are made there and regulate the segment polarity and then it brings the other gene called the segment polarity genes finally the segment polarity genes along with the homeotic genes see these are the two genes that work at the downstream level segment polarity genes and the homeotic genes work together to determine which will be the among them the segment polarity genes determine the boundaries of each segment and homeotic genes define the role of each segment so once the segment polarity gene determines that this is the boundary this this see this is one of the lining this blue blue uh, line so this is the boundary for that gene and homeotic genes determine that this is the section is going to be a part of the thorax and it will be the portion where the wings will be attached and then they'll uh, bring it to that kind of shape as this drosophila goes by as the morphogenesis goes by so it begins with the maternal effect genes maternal effect genes at the top controlling gap genes gap genes are controlling pair rule genes pair rule genes are controlling segment polarity genes and segment polarity genes are controlling homeotic genes and segment polarity homeotic both of them are controlled by pair rule genes they finally brought about the changes in the segmentation remember it's not like that but this is the part because so if you have a particular say i give you a a cake and i want you to cut into do into specific locations specific regions and design it accordingly you need have need to have specific instructions like which part will be uh, what where you exactly cut it which will be the boundary of it which will be the size of it and then where you exactly cut and which place will design in which way so those are the instructions see where exactly you will cut which will be the side which is so see this is a straight large cake if i give you a straight large cake like that like this kind of rectangle cake you should not cut it vertically uh, horizontally like that you should cut it like this like this right this is the idea this is provided by maternal effect genes there at the beginning these are the terminal this is anterior posterior so you should to cut that way then the gap genes will come in which will tell you uh, where to cut it right in the different area so if you want to cut in small segment like 20 if i order you to cut into 20 different segments same length sex segments in that case uh, for a better understanding what you will do you cut it from the middle first then you cut it from the half again and half again to get uh, the exact same content in each egg uh, in each uh, cake actually so for that reason you will first break them down into broad areas that is done by the pair rule genes once the pair rule gene functionality is done then what you will do one of the broad area you take so see from this cake you will you will develop say five uh, you will develop uh, five same segments uh, five same segments you develop and take each of the segment then you bring the pair rule genes there pair rule genes define the segment locations right so you take each of the peg and segment polarity genes help in determining the boundaries so now you know you have to cleave each of them into four pieces so you'll start cleaving them into four pieces see like this way and then homeotic genes means defining the role of the places so once you cleave them based on the segment polarity gene sections like that you cut them into same pieces then the homeotic genes what will they do it will define which section will contain and uh, which will be the role of each segment 
So now once you cleave them among 20, you decorate 5 with cherry, you decorate 5 with raisins, decorate 5 with cashew, decorate 5 with walnuts. So that's the way uh, each of the segments will be decorated, their functions will be defined. So nothing, no analogy can be more uh, convenient than the cutting a cake here because this is the way you can understand how the genie actually functions. Right? I see many students confusing all the terms maternal effect genes, gap genes, pair rule genes, segment polarity genes and homeotic genes. This is how uh, these genes actually work. Right? Okay. Mutation in a homeotic genes cause uh, lots of uh, problems. So if you have a homeotic gene problem even in some cases we see legs coming out of the head and all this stuff. There are some mutations. I'm not going to talk about the details here about that. But mutations in homeotic genes can create problem with the function. Though the genes are defined and determined about their function, but if we place them in the wrong regions, the wrong mutations, in that case they will, they will produce a different function. In head region, the homeotic genes that should provide properly in the head region, it will develop into the different portions like antenna, right? But in this case, Due to the mutation, sometimes they will generate leg instead of antenna. <clears throat> In intrinsic homology found between the genes controlling the segmentation of body. And if you take mouse embryo as well as the fruit fly embryo, in both this case, if you see the 10 hour and 2 12 days embryo for both of them, you will see some extensively region. That this is a green region which will make the head portion. This orange region which will make the back region like that. So see, this is the genetic uh, content, this is the fly chromosome, this is the mouse chromosome, you see a lot of, a lot of similarities out there. This is the homology that is found. It is found that those homological portions, those genes are kind of fixed for, for, from the insects. You know, insect and, and in mammals are distantly related, but still you see this is homology that is present in insect as well as in mammals. So we found that those genes are very, very important for the development as well as for the development of organs and the proper functioning, right? And in the morphogenesis process, it requires the apoptosis to work properly because during the morphogenesis, we not only need, sometimes we need to generate some cells, right? And sometimes we need to kill some cell uh, for the process because it's all about trimming. Let's say you have a uh, a pile of say, uh, if you have a, a play dough, I mean, if you have a dough that is a clay, Chinese clay. Using Chinese clay, we design different things like, <coughs> excuse me. So, if you have the Chinese clay and if you want to design different things, sometimes we need to add some Chinese clay, sometimes also we need to curve, to create a curvature, we need to cut it and also exclude some amount. So, we need to add some cells or we need to delete some cells also during the development. For the deletion of cells during morphogenesis, we rely on programmed cell death or apoptosis. Where is in case of uh, the development for uh, for the for frog as well as for the duck, most of the cases. In case of duck, the process say in all case of duck as well as in case of human, in both the case, if you see the development during the development, all of us have this kind of structure, the joint structure, because cells start dividing and making the structure. The individual fingers are not properly made, but as the time goes by, see after 48, 41 days of fertilization, we have limb structure similar to that of duck. But in case of duck, that structure remains as it is and that uh, structure slowly start to grow into the adult duck. But in case of humans, after 56 days, in between that 15 day duration, all those joint regions of the membrane slowly start to undergo apoptosis or programmed cell death. So those cells start to die, leaving only the this small region of cells which we call as a fingers. Okay. So finally, this is a confusion time. <clears throat> the conclusion about the cellular and molecular mechanism that is essential to development is the specificity of receptors and enzymes that are present. From the beginning of fertilization, we need receptors to, the, to be present on the surface of our gametes. Like receptors should be present on the surface of either egg or sperm for proper fusion. And all we need enzymes 
uh, in form of digestive enzymes present in acrosome for mediation and delivery of the uh, sperm pronucleus inside the inside the egg. Then cytoplasmic organization is a beautiful thing. It is a very important thing because otherwise a proper cytoplasm organization cleavage will not take place. For a proper cleavage, we need to form two sections where we have a yolk rich region uh, in one hemisphere and yolk less region sorry, in the other hemisphere. And the cleavage will start from the animal pole where we have a less yolk. Cell movement <coughs> through the action of cytoskeleton elements and cell adhesion molecules play also vital role. Cell adhesion molecules play the vital role for the compactness of the cells together in the modula as well as in the blastulation phases so that the cells will not segregate so that the blastocell content maintained as it is. As well as the cytoskeletal like the actins as well as the intermediate filaments and the microfilaments play the vital role because the microtubules not only help in segregating the chromosome during the rapid cell division but also uh, <coughs> those microtubules help in pushing the cells uh, the side cells, the ectoderm forward so that to produce the neural tube or the neural development during the neural development as well as it uh, plays a vital role in the cleavage and farrowing as well as it plays a vital role during the invagination of the surround blastomere cells to produce the glastulation phase. And the orientation of tissue layers uh, leading to the induction. Induction means uh, one particular tissue influence another tissue to grow. Uh, into a specific organ. That induction we have seen that the four, forehead of uh, the frog embryo influences the nearby tissue to grow into the <coughs> lens, right, the optical system for the frog. And the, in this case the orientation of that layer is very important because that layer pushes the other tissue to form a specific structure. So see this is the interactions in developmental biology. The interactions is based on the receptors, the enzymes, cell-cell interaction, genetic interaction. We see more in case of the development of drosophila, in case of the segmentation of the body, in case of the organogenesis process. And all of these things work together to finally give us a healthy, mature uh, individual. And then they'll start to grow again after a time until it's adulthood. So gene expression at the end and that's how we complete the whole process of developmental biology basics and I think if you learn all the stages, all the different part of the video that I've covered throughout this process from the beginning till this end, 57 slides are there. I think if you study it properly the way I told you, I think you'll understand developmental biology. If you're a microbiologist or biotechnologist, probably you don't know much about developmental biology before. But this will give you a clear cut inside of developmental biology. So if you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe to my channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friend so they can also get this idea. Thank you.